Hey guys, uh, today I'll be running through how to configure a website that's hosted on the ClearNet, for example, uh, LokiLocker.com, to be accessed uh, also via LokiNet. Uh, so this, uh, the reason you might want to do this is to provide an anonymous way to access a website that's already served on the ClearNet. Um, just be aware that there is the caveat that, uh, for example, if the website is uh, loading in JavaScript and then that JavaScript is making requests to other ClearNet websites, well then the client's IP address in that regard is still going to be leaked uh, out to the uh, servers that it's requesting from. So you need to be aware that, uh, you know, the website itself and what, what it's doing with the uh, client when it loads in information is also important here. Uh, but with that caveat, I think we can actually start. So you'll need SSH access to the actual box that's hosting the website. I'll be showing you how to do this with uh, an Nginx uh, instance and also Apache as well. Those are the most common uh, web servers. It'll probably be similar for you know, wh whichever web server you're using. Um, but yeah, if you don't have uh, direct SSH access, you'll need to talk to your uh, service provider and see if they're willing to install LokiNet on the actual box that's hosting uh, the website itself. So uh, I'm going to start on the Linux command line guide. So the first thing we actually need to do is install LokiNet on the box that's serving that website. Uh, so I've already done this stuff. Uh, we'll add the repository. I think I might have done this already, but um, it's just for posterity's sake, I'll go through this. Uh, and we'll add that. Cool, got that repository added now. We're gonna update, make sure we fetch the latest version of LokiNet. Shouldn't take too long. Cool, and we're going to now sudo apt install LokiNet. We'll go enter here. Cool. All right, uh, so that now that LokiNet is installed, uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is go to the hosting snaps section and uh, we're going to want to make our dot loki address static. So by default whenever you restart your LokiNet client it'll give you a new address uh, but in this case we actually want that address to be fixed. So uh, you can see here if I run this command uh, which essentially asks what my dot loki address is uh, and go paste here I can see okay my loki address right now is c6tx. Uh, so I'm going to add uh, something to the INI file, which is essentially the LokiNet configuration file. Uh, so if I take this command up here and paste it in, because I'm under the root directory already, I'm going to take away this tilde. Depends where you are, you might need that, you might not. Uh, and then I'm going to go all the way to the bottom of the file here. Uh, there's various other settings here, like your bootstrap nodes, where you want your NetDB to, uh, to be stored. You can leave those all uh, the same as they are. I'm going to take this uh, this section though, uh, which is the key file, I'm going to copy this in, and then I'm going to click paste. And this is essentially going to store your private key somewhere permanently and um, not just store it in memory so that when you restart it's uh, always there for you. So I'm going to write out, I just did that control O and then enter, and then X. And essentially what we should see is when we restart here, we should get a new Loki address, but any restarts after that, uh, we should be expecting the same uh, Loki address. So if I paste this in here, and then run that command I was running earlier, I'm just using the up arrow to go back to the commands that I was using before. Uh, you should see, okay, we've got a new Loki address, uh, but restarts after this, we should be expecting to see that Loki, uh, Loki net address say static. So I'm gonna restart one more time and then I'm going to do that same command again and you can see the same result uh, CB17 is our Loki address so I'm going to note that down right now I'm going to copy that out uh, make sure you don't copy that full stop at the end you don't need that I'm just going to come over to a, a text editor here and paste that in for uh, use later so that's actually the LokiNet side fully done. So we're going to move on to the Nginx side here. Uh, you can see I'm already in the directory to see Nginx. Uh, so this is where the configuration files for Nginx are and the um, server blocks we're going to be changing are. So if I go ls here, uh, we'll go into sites available. So cd sites, uh, I think it's sites available. Yep, uh, and type ls. Uh, 
if you're hosting multiple websites here, there could be a couple of um, files here, or there might be default and then the name of the website you're hosting here. Um, obviously, choose which uh, website you want to have a .loki address for, and um, you're going to open that file in a text editor. So, in this case, nano default. So we can scroll down here, we see that we have a server block and the server is listening on port 80 and when it gets a request for port 80 it's going to serve this uh, LokiNet site that I had set up earlier. Um, and yeah, we can see, uh, because I was playing around with this before, I've already got the .loki uh, server name in here, but this, is, this essentially means it's going to listen for uh, its own IP address essentially uh, for a server name. So if I directly type in the IP address of uh, this, I'll be served a HTTP site, and it also it'll be listening for the .loki address uh, that it's under. But typically, what you're gonna see is uh, something like this. You'll just see this um, underscore here, uh, like that, except with a semicolon. Um, the reason, uh, yeah, that colon. There's two types of colons. Um, the reason we want to deal with port 80 here is because, well, there's two reasons. LokiNet is already authenticated. Uh, when you contact a, a Loki service or a LokiNet website, uh, you're essentially contacting a public key. The address that you've used, the .loki address, is a public key, so it's authenticated by its very nature, so you don't actually need an extra layer of authentication on top of that, which is what HTTPS is, essentially. Um, authentication and encryption here, but we don't really need it because we've already got that with LokiNet, so we deal directly uh, with port 80. Now, you can actually serve a HTTPS website with a .loki address. Um, you're kind of double, double wrapping uh, here, which is not really necessary. You can do it, but the other issue is uh, a certificate authority is not going to give you a authorization for a .loki address. Um, I know that they have done it rarely with some onion addresses, but it's just not really a thing. So when someone accesses your website uh, using HTTPS and .loki address, they're going to get big warnings everywhere that says, you know, this is this is using a self-signed certificate, and you shouldn't trust this, and blah blah blah. So typically, we're not going to use HTTPS unless it's entirely required, and in those cases, you're going to have to warn your users um, that they will see a big you know, flashing red lights when they access your website. Um, but in this case, we've also we've also got a HTTPS um, configuration here, and it's just the typical stuff that uh, Setbot will put in some redirects and uh, where it's being served. But that's not really necessary for us. So we're gonna go back up to the uh, port 80 section, and we're going to copy in the Loki net address that I had in earlier. So we're gonna copy that. Uh, come to server name and this is typically what you'll see and we're going to press enter and then just paste in uh, the dot loki address and that should be all that's necessary here and then write out uh, and then click uh, click exit so uh, the other thing we might want to change and if we go back one directory here uh, and go to nginx uh, nano nginx conf the other thing we might want to change is the server name hash bucket size. So essentially once the server name gets to a certain size, um, Nginx can freak out a little bit and um, you know, essentially you need to actually untoggle this uh, section and put it up a little bit. So typically this is going to be uncommented at 64. I recommend you um, uncomment this and raise it to 128. And I've already done that here. Um, so I can exit that for now. And that should be all that's required. We'll restart here. So I think it's service uh, nginx reload. Uh, cool, that's going to reload the configuration. And then if we take this .loki address and copy it, we should already be able to access this .loki uh, site. And this should work in any browser uh, because I've got a LokiNet client running here already uh, on this server, so you can see it's already loading up now. Uh, obviously, it is a little bit slower because there's, in this case, uh, I think the round round trip hops is like 14 here. So, um, you know, your client is creating a three hop path and then there's like an intermediary node and then there's another three hop path on the other side and then it has to do all the same again to get back to you. So it's always going to be slower um, than, 
you know, just accessing the site through ClearNet, uh, but you're getting much more anonymity on both the server and the client side. Because this server is still addressable by its IP address and also um, via its host name, uh, which is LokiLocker.com, uh, Loki we're not actually getting much here in terms of server privacy, but the client here is um, entirely private. So yeah, that's one other caveat. If you're accessing a Loki, uh, a .loki address, you need a, a Loki client. The other good thing about this is that they don't need to tech, uh, access this through um, any specific web browser. They can use Firefox, they can use Chrome. And you know, just to show you, if I open up a new terminal here, I should also be able to ping uh, on this uh, .loki address, uh, even though there's, I haven't done any configuration here. Like this is not set up like ITP with a proxy. Uh, you can just automatically, um, you know, ping stuff, and uh, all of your uh, services should work. So yeah, I'm getting a response from here. You can see the times are much slower, but I'm getting a response nonetheless.